Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube shorty video. So today what I wanted to show you is how to import video into Pro Tools and specifically things to consider when you're importing video so that you do it correctly, you do it more professionally, you're just a little more efficient about it. Okay, so one of the first things that I do before I even import my video is I'll check my main time counter here. So right now I'm on minutes and seconds. So what I would probably do is switch to time code because I'm about to work with a film, right? So I would switch that to time code and then I also might show the sub counter if I feel like it. And you can set that to minutes and seconds or whatever you wanna set it to. So the other thing that I might do before I start is go over here where it says nudge and I might change my nudge value. So I might make it a frame. It's kind of just a preference thing. Um, but just keep in mind that you can change that value. Okay, so then you're ready to import your video. So you go file, import, video, and it's that simple. And then find your video. So I just downloaded one of my old YouTube videos so I won't have any copyright issues here. So then you get your video import options so you can choose where to put it. And so this is just like when we import audio, right? So you can put the video at session start. You can put it at selection, which is where your cursor is currently. So like right here for me, or you can put it at spot, which means you manually enter the location, right? So you're going to physically type in a location if you select spot. So I usually just do session start because Pro Tools, you can only have one video track and depending on you know the version of Pro Tools, you can only have one video clip on that one video track. They really don't want you editing video in Pro Tools. So, so I usually just do session start because it's the only video that I'm importing for that session. And then you can choose whether or not to import the audio from the file. So I'll do that for now so you can see what that looks like. It's gotta enable my video engine. And then it's gonna ask you where to put those audio files if you checked off to import the audio files. So it defaults to the audio files folder. That's where I recommend putting them. So I just hit open and it goes for it. And I have this lovely look on my face. So you can adjust the size of this window here, the video window. And you can either do command and then nine on the numeric keyboard, or you can go window and then go to video to make this video display or hide. So if you don't see this video window, you can actually click here to find it, or you can do command nine on the numeric keypad. Okay, and so something to keep in mind is that you might get an error when you're importing video. Pro Tools can be kind of finicky about the video format. So a good rule to keep in mind is that Pro Tools does like QuickTime videos. So if you're having trouble, you could try to convert it to a QuickTime. I've also noticed that if it's in like high def, you can try converting it to standard def or vice versa, and that might help as well. Um, but basically Pro Tools can be kind of finicky. Just try to convert the video if you're getting an error. Cool, so we get this video track right here and you can drag this around just like any other track and you'll see that we have thumbnails here. So you can also view it as blocks. I don't like that way. I don't know who really does, but you can also view it that way. And you'll notice as you zoom in further that Pro Tools will auto-generate thumbnails based on how zoomed in you are. So you'll see, the thumbnails get more specific as you zoom in basically. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just zooming so you can see what that looks like. And then we zoom out. We just have the one thumbnail. Zoom in, we get more detail. My system's being a little weird, so I'm just gonna do this so you can see. When we're working with audio in Pro Tools, basically, if you move around a clip, it will show you the preview for where the head of that clip is or where the head of that highlighted region is. So as you see, as I drag this around, where we are in the video will actually change. So that's good to keep in mind. Wherever you're clicking with your selector is gonna be what you're seeing on that video window. Okay, and so one of the first things that you need to do when you're importing video before you start to work with it is you wanna make sure that your frame rate for your session is set correctly so that it matches your video. So right now we can see over here, it says 30 frames per second. So that's what my actual video has. It has a 30 frames per second frame rate. So what we wanna do is we wanna to go to setup and then session or command and then two on the numeric keypad. And we just wanna click on that and that'll pop up this window for us. And then what we wanna do is look at the time code right here and we wanna match that. So for example, if I had been in a different frame rate for my session than my video, we'll notice that it'll be red. So that's one of the first things you wanna look for is you wanna see if this number here is in red. If it's in red, you need to go to set up session, command and two on the numeric keypad and you need to change this time code rate until you can get it to match. So 30 frames per second. So if you have a different frame rate that Pro Tools doesn't accept here and have as an option, then you might need to convert your video to correctly import it. 
Okay, and then the other thing that you might want to do in this window is you might want to go to where it says session start here and you might want to change this value. So you can just click in here and change the value by manually typing it in. And you just might want to do that so that it matches whatever is on your production spec sheet. You know, if you have one, if you've been supplied with one or so that it matches any time code that might be burned onto your actual video. So when that happens, it's when we see the time code, usually like in the upper left or right corner of the actual video, you'll see the time code overlaid over our actual video. And so once we have that set properly, we can then work with our video. So you can do whatever you're gonna do, do your sound design, whatever it is. And then when you're ready to go, when you're all done, what I usually do is I just click once with the grabber tool on the actual video clip and that highlights the whole video. Um, of course, if you have audio that's going after that that you wanna keep, you'll wanna highlight whatever the time duration is for your whole project. But usually I just click with the grabber tool on the actual video clip and then you just go file, bounce to, and then you're just gonna pick QuickTime to make an actual video. So if you want just the audio, you do bounce to disc. If you want the actual video with it, then you do bounce to QuickTime. And so sometimes, you know, as audio people, we'll just bounce to disc and then we let the video people uh, reconnect the video with the audio. But sometimes we might wanna bounce to QuickTime to show people a work in progress. You know, it just depends on the project really. But you know, a lot of times if we're working on something, the video people will will have to convert the video to import into Pro Tools and then it might not be the highest quality for the video. So then we might bounce to disk and then have the video people reconnect. But yeah, that's basically it. When you're ready to bounce out a video, you just go bounce to QuickTime instead of bounce to disk. So yeah, that's basically it. So I hope you guys found this useful and helpful. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, subscribe to my channel, or check out my other videos. I'll be coming out with new videos every Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay.